All right, guys, you know I've been primarily an Apple guy and this has been primarily an Apple channel, but after years of incremental upgrades and using essentially the same iPhone for the last three to four years, I felt like trying something new, something fresh. So I decided to get my first foldable and order the Galaxy Z Fold 5. I'm still figuring out how to make this thing work within my otherwise Apple ecosystem, but I'm really, really enjoying using this thing. So much so that it made me curious about its little brother, the Z Flip 5. I've been using that for a week now as well, and damn it, I love it too. Let's ramble. Hold up, face go up when I pull up. They all on me like it once. Hey, what's up, guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. So yeah, like I said, I'm thoroughly enjoying the Z Fold 5. It's obviously not Samsung's first foldable, but it's my first foldable. And coming from a long line of iterative iPhone updates, this is the first time in years I feel genuinely excited about using a new phone again. It feels like foldables have come a long way. A lot of teething problems have been fixed, and the devices feel mature. So far, I felt no desire to pick up my iPhone 14 Pro, apart from some things that I do really miss, like copy and pasting text from my MacBook straight to my phone and AirDrop. But anyway, after my initial review, which is already on the channel, I'm now documenting how I'm making this device work within my mostly Apple ecosystem. So if you're interested in that, definitely make sure you subscribe to the channel. Anyway, as much fun as I'm having reviewing the Fold, the Z Flip 5 kept popping up in my feeds and like a little magpie, I just kept seeing it from the corner of my eye. It looks so tiny and so cool, so I had no choice really and decided to order it for review. You know, for you guys. And let me tell you, so far it does not disappoint. So let's get right into it. The unboxing is clean, just like the Fold, not that much in the box, but hey, how many charging bricks do we really need, right? The Z Flip comes in two variants, 256 gigabytes and 512 gigabytes at a price of $999 or $1199 respectively. It comes in a bunch of different colors, gray, blue, green, and yellow, but also some funky colors like mint, graphite, lavender, and cream. The IO on the phone is straightforward. We have an on and off button with a fingerprint scanner, a volume rocker, speaker grill, a USB-C port, and a couple of mics. And of course, a SIM tray. I think the US model has a millimeter wave antenna as well, but the European model does not seem to have that. At 187 grams, it is a little lighter than the iPhone 14 Pro and a lot lighter than the Z Fold 5, which comes in at 253 grams. Unfolded, the phone measures 165 millimeters by 72 millimeters, and it's only seven millimeters thick. But what makes this phone so attractive to me, and I guess to a lot of other people, is how tiny it gets when it's folded down. Only 85 millimeters by 72 millimeters and 15 millimeters thick, which isn't much thicker than my iPhone with a case on and quite a bit thinner than my Z Fold 5 with a case on. Now, obviously it's a bit of an unfair comparison since the Z Flip doesn't have a case on it, but I will be rocking this thing naked. For me, since the tiny size is one of its main attractions, I don't wanna be adding any bulk to it. I might consider a skin later, but that's it. There are of course cases available and I picked one up to show you guys to see how it looks and feels with a case on as opposed to the bare bones look and feel. It's a bit finicky to get on, but this is a folding phone after all, so it's obviously gonna be a bit more complicated than a single solid case. Just a little side note, if you come from an earlier model of the Z Flip and you're hoping to use your old case, unfortunately, you're out of luck. Now, one of the major improvements of the Z Flip 5 over the previous models is of course the hinge, or the flex hinge as Samsung calls it. Like the Fold 5, the hinge falls almost completely flat now, which will be a huge help in preventing lint and other grime from getting stuck in the crease, which has been one of the things that put me off from considering a foldable in the past. I really love the design of the hinge too, and how it gracefully covers the Samsung branding as you open it. The crease on the inside is still visible, but it doesn't really bother me. And this is the same thing I found in my review of the Z Fold 5 because the screen is so bright and vibrant, the crease really just disappears. Sure, you can still see it when you look at the phone from a side angle, but I'm not really in the habit of doing that. And I'm not that worried about some nosy neighbor seeing the crease on my phone. What does bother me just a little bit is that the hinge doesn't seem to fully extend. The phone seems to be at a very slight angle, even when it's fully folded open, I mean, it's just the slightest curve, but it's enough to tickle my OCD. 
Now, the improved hinge of these phones is great, but the real feature on the Z Flip 5 is of course that crispy and much bigger cover display. It is now rocking a 3.4 inch Super AMOLED 720x748 display, and coming from a much smaller 1.9 inch display, that is a major improvement, and it elevates the cover display from a little gimmick that was mainly good for notifications to an actually useful and usable display. I absolutely love this cover display. There's something about the vibrant screen in this tiny form factor that really appeals to me. It is still only 60 Hertz, but realistically, who needs 120 Hertz on a tiny screen like that? And I'm sure the 60 Hertz display will help preserve a little bit of battery life. Although an adaptive refresh rate like Apple's ProMotion displays would have probably been even better. Out of the box, the display does dim really fast, but if you're not fussed about saving battery life, you can change that in the settings to a maximum of 30 seconds. It also comes with a collection of all new widgets that all look great on the little display. What I don't like is that the cover screens can't really be customized. For example, I really like the vibrant and clean looking stock wallpaper here, but I wish I could add a battery percentage widget to it, but you can't. In fact, there isn't too much customization going on here at all. However, you can beef up the widgets menu by navigating to the labs option menu. Here you can change all kinds of settings for the displays and you can use the main screen navigation on the cover screen. Out of the box, there are no full apps on the Flip 5's outer display, but through the labs option in the settings menu, you'll be able to turn on the ability to run a limited list of full apps. And that's it for now. Maybe this library will grow over time as developers will work on optimized versions of their apps, but for now, this is what we got. However, there's a hack that enables you to basically move any app you want to the cover screen. All you need to do is download a Samsung app called GoodLock, and from there, you wanna download MultiStar and enable the launcher widget from the cover displays menu. And now you can send any app you want to the cover screen. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what turns this phone from a pretty cool phone into a really awesome phone for me. I use it to quickly check Twitter, check my stats on YouTube Studio, type quick messages on Telegram, but it's also where I keep my QR code apps to help me get access to things like the gym, for example, and my Bold app that opens the front door to my office. You know, apps that I need all the time and I need quickly. Now, of course, not all apps work perfectly yet, but the fact that I can use this many apps without ever having to flip the phone open is just awesome and super convenient. Having said that, once you do open it up, you're greeted by a beautiful display. Dynamic AMOLED 2X, 120 Hertz, HDR 10 plus, and 1750 nits peak brightness, and that is no joke. It is more than double the nits of the Z Flip 4 and more than enough to see what's on your screen very clearly, even on the sunniest days. The dimensions on the inner display, the fact that it's taller and slimmer than your average phone definitely takes some getting used to, but this phone is made for top to bottom split screen multitasking. Using two apps stacked on top of each other does not feel crammed and it's been very, very comfortable and a great experience overall. I can see myself using this all the time. It has the same battery as before, 3,700 milliamp hour, so I'm curious to see if the larger outside display and the brighter inside display will eat through that battery quicker, but so far it seems that the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip helps a great deal in the battery efficiency department. Obviously, you can do things yourself to help a little bit, like switch in a dark mode, and I know for a lot of people that's probably the default mode. The problem for me is that I don't like dark mode. I know I might be a dying breed, but what can I say? I'm a light mode kind of guy. And lastly, there's a light performance profile option, which will lower the overall performance of the phone, but it will also noticeably increase battery life. Whether you will notice the reduced performance really depends on the type of user you are. So I would definitely recommend trying it out. And if the phone feels the same to you, you bought yourself some extra battery time. The good news is that it takes under 90 minutes to charge the phone from completely dead to completely full two hours if you use wireless charging, and 30 minutes of quick charge will get you to 50% battery life. Now, you can of course use the cable that comes in the box, but if you wanna liven things up a bit, I can recommend Chubby Cables. And thank you very much to them for sponsoring this part of the video and sending over some of their awesome cables. You can see that they're top quality just by looking at them, and even the baggies and the cases they come in feel and look premium. Chubby Cables offers cables for all types of devices, so you can get your USB-C to C cables, but if you need a USB-A to C or a lightning cable, you can get those as well. Even coiled cables for your mechanical keyboards, it's all there. 
What's cool is that you can also pick between thinner and thicker cables, in other words, you can decide how chubby they are, and whether you want a smooth rubber finish or a braided cable, for instance. Very nice cable ties are already included, so you can keep them neatly organized in your tech pouches. So guys, if you like the look of these, have a look at their website. There's a link in the description with a 10% discount code to knock a little bit off your price tag. Right, back to the phone. The cameras are decent, they're good, but not great. The selfie camera is pretty much the same 10 megapixel wide selfie camera. And for the main camera, we have a double shooter of 12 megapixels, one wide and one ultra wide. With that said, I don't think I'll be using the selfie camera much because having that new crispy display on the front means you can use the main camera to snap your selfies since you have a perfectly usable preview right there. I like how Samsung integrated this. You just tap on the screen to take your photos, which feels very intuitive and works beautifully. Of course, you can also take advantage of the hinge to set the phone up for timed photos of yourself and or groups of people. And once activated, you can also use flex mode, which works with the camera app, but also other apps like YouTube or the calendar app and a bunch of other ones. Now I've been raving about this phone so much, surely there's something negative, right? Yes, of course there is. The Z Flip 5 does not have DeX on board. So if DeX is a requirement for you, this phone is not for you. So guys, I have to admit, Samsung did a really great job with their foldables this year. I really like the Fold 5 for a lot of reasons. I did not expect to like the Flip this much, but this might just be the most fun to use phone of 2023. I will of course follow these initial reviews up down the line, so be sure to get yourself subscribed if you enjoyed these videos. Please give one of these, it really does help the channel. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for some links to videos you might also wanna watch.